And so the school day drew to a close. Today was only a half day due to it being a Saturday. I skipped all my classes and sat around the roof, wondering what to do next. As the school was on electrical ground, I would it would probably be best for me to stay here as much as possible. Hell, maybe I'd even go as far as spending the night here. I figured today might be very well the day I did that. I had stuff to take care of anyway. I closed my eyes and focused, trying to practice what I did in the classroom the other night. Activated my Ananurb. I'd repeated the process hundreds and hundreds of times since early morning. My eyes slowly fluttered open. I'd been at it for over five hours now, but I could still, uh, but I still couldn't control it all that well. My power is omnidirectional, which meant that I, unless I had a firm grip on my reins, I'd never be free from the risk of recklessly slicing up friend and foe alike. In all honestly, this hardly felt like a power suited for protecting others, the way it was prone to indiscriminately harming everything and everyone in its vicinity made it seem more like a wild animal gone berserk. I took a deep breath and reached out with my right hand, focusing on everything from my shoulder to my fingertips and even beyond that, picturing something flying out of it. That something was the blade of a guillotine. Having experienced numerous decapitations in that dreamscape ever since I'd been discharged from the hospital, its sheer prowess had long since seeped into the very crevices of my being. As such, I could replicate its sharpness with relative ease. The problem, as I'd previously implied, lay in controlling it. On that front, Kasumi did a better job than me. Back then, I viewed her attacks as nothing more than a haphazardly released series of slashes. But forcing this thing of properly hitting its target was no trivial feat. I wasn't praising her for such a deed, nor did I want to, but if I was to be honest, being able to aim all her slashes directly at my neck without fail stood testament to a certain level of skill. Hard to tell if it was her hard to tell if it was her kendo experience or single minded personality at work there. Though at any rate for a slacker like me who had yet to put serious effort into anything in life, it felt like a bit of a Bit of a tough assignment to tackle, as in it wasn't going well at all. Much like right now. Despite aiming for the empty cans sitting lonely at the beat bench, I ended up slicing up the wire mesh a good three meters away from it. I sucked at this big time. More tired than exasperated, I ended up throwing myself spread eagle onto the ground. I had the time neither to slack off nor sulk, but I wasn't gonna get anywhere at this rate. I needed a more effective way to train, and I needed it now. If I kept this up, I'd just end up, end up pointlessly destroying school property without any results to show for it. Sakurai claimed that grasping and giving it form was key, which made me consider sketching it down, but I felt like that to be kind of off the mark. What I'd likely need is a way to crystallize the aggression within me. What the hell was the logic behind having a guy with a fear of blades materials like guillotine? Hell, why even me of all people? Take Marie, for example. What exactly was her deal? Judging from the vague memories I have of that dream, I got the feeling she was talking something about fate or predestination. I could say for sure I didn't know any French people, no, nor had I ever visited the country. I couldn't imagine the two of us having any kind of predestined relationship, but there was one thing I would knew for a fact. Your body. I gently placed a finger on my neck. The makeup I applied to the skin may have concealed it nicely, but Marie's decapitation scar was definitely still there. In life, she must have been executed with a guillotine. She didn't give me the impression of a sinner or criminal, but then again the 18th century was a heyday of civil revolutions over which Charles, plenty of people must have died for crimes they never committed. And perhaps the true nature of this power came in the form of her grudges and regrets from her past life, which would certainly explain her indiscriminate urge to destroy everything in her path. On the other hand, I couldn't sense the faintest hint of malice from Marie herself. 
Ananerb devoured souls, growing stronger with each kill. Upon fusing with beings like that, resisting the urge to kill, felt the height of stupidity. Sakurai went so far as to call it suicide. In short, unless I supplied it with constant sacrifices, it would eat away at my own soul until I died. So the total shock I had at the moment was... Were the 10 or so people Kasumi had killed. It sure didn't sound like a lot, but... I was likely going to use them all up the moment fighting broke out for real. With that said, using the souls of innocent people as fuel for my purposes was out of the question. I wouldn't do it. My best bet was to try and beat the first enemy with my only soul. With only my soul. Then I could just absorb and keep using the souls of my defeated enemies onwards. Which sounded kinda... no, it actually sounded pretty much nigh impossible. At any rate, the problem was picking a first opponent. According to Sakurai, I was up against the 12 others. Considering I'd eventually have to face them all, logic would dictate I would have to start with the weakest. Not necessarily the most solid plan in terms of absorbing souls, but nothing good would come from overstepping, overstepping by bounds. Hey there. Then who should I aim my sights on? Well, Helm was a powerhouse, Rusalka was a complete enigma. As for Sakurai, more than anything, she was tough to deal with. Then there was the Spinner guy, whom I knew nothing about, seeing how I'd yet to actually meet him, I wondered how strong of an opponent he'd be. Wait, what the hell was I even thinking? I couldn't count my chickens before they hatched, taking on someone, let alone defeating them, in my current state. I felt baffled by my own stupidity. In the end, I had to keep my sights locked on what I could accomplish at the moment. I sat down, cross-legged, once again focusing my attention on destroying school property. At least the door was locked, so I didn't need to worry about a stray attack mowing down Himuro in case she happened to show up at the show up out of the blue. And just like that, four and a half hours passed. I'd been relentlessly practicing until sunset, but I wasn't seeing the results I wanted. Maybe I just lacked the necessary talent. I didn't particularly lament not having a power for murder, or ha having a talent for murder, but that in itself was little consolation given my current situation. I felt genuinely frustrated. <laughs> If I was going to spend the night at school, I first needed to make the necessary preparations. Like food, to name just one. Yes. I stood up and left the roof, with no progress to show for my efforts. Save for the fact that the urges within me appeared to recede a bit, no doubt because I spent half a day slicing things up. So even if I left school, I doubted I would attack civilians out of nowhere. That. If nothing else, made continuing on this pathetic training regime worth it. And yet. Why was she here? Why that's yeah no probably not I could not tell her no matter what I could never allow her to remember that incident and I wasn't gonna let her get involved with my per current predicament either in which case... Oh boy. Asumi grabbed hold of my arm to stop me as I tried to turn around. However... She let go of me in surprise, like she just touched red hot coals. Uh, could she have noticed something? My chest ached from the look she gave me, one of bafflement mixed with a twinge of trepidation. I had to lie to her.
What was I supposed to do about her, though? Quite frankly, I couldn't afford to focus on this right now. But she was clearly not the type to back down due to it being continuously ignored. If anything, it might have been more dangerous to let her wander around aimlessly with no sense of impending data. danger. In which case, I needed something, anything, that would make her back off without relieving... Re relieving... Revealing the truth. Bleh. Something that would convince her. Was there anything that could get through to her? Nah, you're what grounds Ren. She said the same thing that night. Yeah, I had that same feeling. This was a bit of an awkward development. I mean, even I knew girls had a part like that to them, and Kasumi was a girl too. So, she must be the same thing, right? Wink. You must have felt irritated by my constant lack of answers and tried her best to recklessly struggle due to not seeing the whole picture. In a way, those feelings of hers, albeit on a different scale, resembled the way of I felt about Sakurai. I understood that I and I bleh, I understood that and knew I just couldn't shrug this off. Now, considering Kasumi's honest, clear-cut personality, the problem was likely more pronounced than in her case. Kasumi's words made the events of the fateful night drift back to the forefront of my mind. Those very same feelings of her ended up causing her all that pain. I needed to deal with this in a clever way to make sure she would never go through a nightmare like that again. If I could tell her the truth, the least I could do was fabricate a convincing enough lie. An obvious lie or continue the attempts to ignoring her, to the point of it looking unnatural would be like telling her to pry further, ultimately achieving the opposite effect. I needed to think. Was there nothing else I could use? I couldn't delay this issue, I had to get it over with right away. So what would make her stop needlessly worrying about me while also keeping her away? Momentarily averting my gaze from the suspicious Kasumi, I took a great deep breath. By the time I looked her in the eye again, my lips had curled into a wry smile. Would this really work? Really? 